Hello and welcome, my name is Frank Fischer and in this video I would like to introduce you to the command line interface of DeepCode. Um, what I will do now in this video is actually three steps. We will download and install, we will configure and we will use the command line on a, let's say, simulated Linux um, CI server. Um, so that could be your CI server. Um, to see how we can make use of deep code in like automated processes that we have. So the deep code CLI is actually a Python based uh, product and you can find it on pypy.org. So pypy.org you find the deep code here as, um, as a product, as a project. And what you also see here is, or already see here is, um, there's a minimum required Python version. It's a Python 3 product and we need to have Python 3.6.5 installed and work towards it. And that's not a big of a hassle, um, but we need to make sure it's not Python 2, it needs to be Python 3. So for this now, next step, I have a Ubuntu server here. It's our simulated CI server. And I did three things um, in preparation now. I installed Python 3.8, um, which is the, the latest Python 3 that I can find here. Um, it has a pip installed, so Python 3 pip is installed because this tool we will use to install deep code later. And it has a tool called virtual environment installed that we are making use of uh, to configure virtual environments in Python. So starting off um, with the virtual environment, um, Python actually has a very neat feature that is these virtual environments. And what we can do is we can separate our, our products, our projects um, from each other by using virtual environments. And uh, that is quite nice because it um, makes sure that there are no conflicts, there are no overrides. Uh, we, we neatly keep things in separated ways. And this is something I want to use he here with uh, deep code. So I'm generating a virtual environment called a deep code. And what it does is it generates a, a directory structure um, that is called according to the virtual environment. And there we have some, yeah, some, some bits and pieces that are separated for us now. Um, in the moment that we activate this, we will actually work towards this one and every change we're doing in the Python environment, new installations and stuff like this will happen within um, this virtual environment. So let's activate it. This is done by the command source. And then it's using, um, it's using a kind of a script, if you want to put it this way, that is actually here in the local bin directory. So source uh, bin activate activates this environment and you see we have now um, in the prompt we have deep code which flags that we are now working towards this um, yeah, virtual environment. So next step, let's install deep code and we do this by using pip3 um, install deep code. What happens now is pip uh, goes up to the repository, downloads the bits and pieces, um, resolves all the references and installs it into this virtual environment. So it's not in the global environment, it's in the virtual environment here. So now we have deep code installed and I want to show you the first command here, so to say, that is help. Um, because there is a lot of help uh, in this command and you can find it also context sensitive. So there is help for different commands and it's, it's really, really neat and really helpful to remind you on the, the options and stuff like this you have. So whenever you get stuck, you know, think about help um, that will no normally um, get you out of this. So with help, um, it also shows the three basic commands we have. We have a login command, a config command and an analyze command. The login will help us to start a browser-based authentication towards the backend and to generate the API token that we need to authenticate the CLI towards the backend. Um, this obviously works on machines that have a browser installed and have a, a UI accordingly. Our simulated CI server here does not have this. Um, so I will show you an alternative way in doing this. So the alternative way is we need to have uh, this API token. So where do we get this API token from? If you go to the deep code website, so this is the deep code website. On the top right, you have the my dashboard. 
Um, if you go on my dashboard, you see your typical deep code dashboard, but on the top right again, you have this um, man icon or yeah, human icon that there is. Um, if you click on it, you see the account um, popping up. So there is this account menu. If you click on the account menu, here we are, there in the sort of say second headline, we have the deep code API tokens. Um, here you can create new API tokens so that you um, yeah, can provide uh, different tokens to different machines, but you can also revoke these tokens. And obviously one thing I will do after recording this video is revoking all of these tokens because I don't want you to know them. Um, obviously these tokens should be secretive, you know, and you should not uh, put them on a YouTube video. So I will copy now this token here um, and go back to our machine and I will call deep code config and with this deep code starts on and asks us two main questions. Question number one, what is the back the point, the, the back end point that we want to work with. Um, this is the default and it's actually the free of charge uh, provided internet facing service from deep code itself. So the typical thing you, you find in the internet um, and we will use that one. If you have a Docker container and you find a YouTube video on how to install these Dockers and stuff like this um, uh, next to this one here, if you have the Docker container, you can point the CLI to your own internal Docker container and can use the CLI in that regard. So this would be this configuration here. We leave it as a default. And the second question it asks us is the API key. And so we are simply copying the API key in here that we just uh, generated upstairs. And um, with this, we are not asked um, every time we're calling the CLI for the API key. So this gives us a bit of... Um, yeah, it, it makes things a bit easier for us. Obviously, what you can see here, you know, the, the dash A, we could uh, provide the API key also in, in the call that we're doing to the, to the CLI command. We don't have to have the configuration. The configuration itself is stored in a file that is called dot decode.json. It's a JSON based um, configuration, pretty easy. Um, so if you want to generate it yourself, you can also generate it yourself. So now we did all of the configuration. Now we're coming to the last point um, using this tool actually. So what I did was I um, cloned uh, a repository on this machine and it's actually the repository of a project called Ansible. It's a, it's a quite large uh, Python project. Um, so what we do now is we have deep code, analyze is the command we are calling and uh, we say dash P, which is the path command we are asking it to look into this path and um, yeah analyze whatever is in this path so we are firing this and what happens now is the command generates um, bundles so these bundles have a size limitation their maximum size is four megabytes so we are doing several of these bundles because the the source code is larger than this then these bundles are uploaded and analyzed and the feedback you see here so this was real time what happened in the back um, so this is how we use it from a local uh, path. There's another way of using it and I want to do this and then we look a bit more into how the, the feedback looks like, the, the, the JSON that comes back. And this is actually the dash R, so the repository remote um, yeah, way of using the analyze. So what we're doing now is deep code analyze dash R. Um, we're giving it a, a, a git repository in the internet. You see GitHub here, and that is one of uh, the repositories here. And I also give a, a user um, accordingly so that um, Git knows you know, who, who we are talking to. Um, with this, we are actually asking the, the deep code backend to, to analyze uh, this, um, yeah, this, this Git rep repository via our machine. And what I also do is I have the dash L here, which means I'm asking deep code also to run a linter um, as a secondary measure to this. Um, and there's one word of warning to that. Um, in, in, in Ansible's case, the linter would have taken some time uh, because the linter is not not equal to deep code. Yeah? Deep code is, is much, much faster as the linter. So deep code takes literally milliseconds while the linter um, takes longer. And uh, that might be the, the limiting factor on the, the timing behavior. But with this code, it's not a, a big thing. Um, I can also use the linter. 
So we do this. Um, it gets um, yeah, <laughs> uh, downloaded, uploaded, um, analyzed, and the results are here. Um, so what do we see now? So this is the standard output. There is uh, the opportunity with a dash txt to also get a text output, which um, flattens what we see here um, and um, makes it a bit nicer for the human eye. But this is the, the format, uh, the JSON format, that is uh, the default format. And the JSON format comes uh, with an ID field, which is a unique identifier that you can use also to um, identify the calls that you are doing. Then we have results and the results are files and suggestions. So let's start with the files. We're starting off with the file name and the path. Um, and then you have um, uh, like an identifier here. So it's the zero, uh, string zero to start with. And then in string zeros, we have columns and rows. So this def defines um, the, the position within the source file where we found um, the, 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 the suggestion here. And then you see markers and we are saying in the message between um, character 37 and character 47, um, this should be linked to uh, the source file column and rows. So if you think about the, the deep code user interface, you have these toggle links where you see highlights coming up and stuff like this. And this is exactly how this is, so to say, encoded in here. Um, and uh, now the big question is, okay, what is the message? So where do I get the, the words that I can display? So we have the files here and deep down there you find the suggestions. Um, and here you find these um, indexes again. So here we have the zero, there's again an ID for this uh, suggestion and then you have the message. So this is the, the, the words you would use. And there's also the severity provided so that you um, yeah, can find out um, which one is, is more severe and, and which is less severe. So severity three is the highest severity, then comes two and then comes one. Um, last but not least, what I want to show you is the URL. So if we um, copy this URL here and we are pasting it into a browser, you are actually see the representation of the scan that you just did in the deep code um, dashboard. So here you find uh, the typical way that we show things in the deep code dashboard. And this is uh, available 24 hours after you did the scan. Um, then we are clearing our caches and this will probably be no longer available. But um, until then you can use this URL that is provided to you as, the, um, as part of the JSON um, to display it in a, in a friendly manner. So what I wanted to show you was how to install, how to config and how to use the CLI on your CI uh, Linux machine. Thanks for watching, but now it's your turn. Go to deepcode.ai and check out what Deepcode can do for your code.